Tiburcio Vasquez at Lopez Station, according to Jose Jesus Lopez of Lopez Station, by David Smith. When Vasquez was hanging around Lopez Station, he rode a fine cream-colored horse, stolen somewhere in the San Joaquin Valley, I now have forgotten from what ranch. The horse was almost pure white. He had a good saddle and riding rig, carried the best of Colt revolvers, and had a fine watch and chain. Always he wore a fine, black, broadcloth cape, I believe for the purpose of enabling him to draw a knife or his revolver unnoticed. Vasquez, as I remember him, was a very smooth talker. He had a genteel and ingratiating way about him and was a good-looking man. None of the pictures I have seen of him do him justice, but he would involve even his best friend and was a rascal throughout. It was in 1871 or 72 that Vasquez first began hanging around Lopez Station. I remember him very well. He represented himself to be Don Ricardo Cantua, using his mother's maiden name as a surname. He hung around the station day after day. He dressed well, wearing a good black flat brimmed hat, the broadcloth cape, a good suit of clothes, and well-polished boots. At that time, before he disappeared from the locality to be gone for a couple of years, he proposed to me that he run a poker game in the bar room. I was helping my father at the time, tending bar part of the time, and looking after the stock. I had my band of sheep at the time, but Ramon Soto looked after them when I was helping my father. A poker game generally was going on in the bar room, and Don Ricardo proposed that he bank it. I agreed and backed him for a week or so until he left. It was about three years later, after I had gone to the Tejon, that Tiburcio returned to Lopez Station. I was at home occasionally, getting supplies and helping my father as he needed help. It was then that Tiburcio was visiting the Francisco Vazquez home in Soledad Canyon. He was there off and on for about six months, when he skipped out because of the trouble at the home of Francisco. Several weeks after Tiburcio left Lopez Station for the last time, word came to me at the Tejon of what had happened. I hurried south to find where Tiburcio was. Among the places where I inquired was the home of my cousin, the wife of Greek George. This man was one of the camel drivers that General Beale brought from San Antonio in 1857. His correct name was George Carilambo. He became a United States citizen and took the name of George Allen. I knew him well as I often visited at his home in what is now Hollywood. The Allens told me that Vasquez had been making his headquarters in the hills west of their place and that he had made a habit of coming to their home for an occasional good square meal. George also told me that my father had been to his home only about a week before, also inquiring about where Vasquez was hanging out, and that he and his wife had told father the same things he told me. I immediately rode into Los Angeles and informed the officers of what I had learned. On my way back to the Tejon, I stopped at Lopez Station and told my father and mother what I had done. My father told me that a short time before he had done the same thing. One day two officers came to Lopez Station and inquired of my father about Vasquez. Father told them he did not know Vasquez when he saw him, and so he could give them no aid. The officers had been out all night and came into the barroom to have a drink and to get breakfast before they went back into Los Angeles. I was in the barroom at the time talking to Don Ricardo Cantua. When the officers walked in the door, Don Ricardo was standing at the end of the bar, leaning against the wall not three feet from them. They were laughing and talking about their failure to find Vasquez. In a joking way, one of them said, We are looking for Vasquez, and they tell us he is around here. Don Ricardo did not blink an eye, but laughed and joked with them. But I could see that he was on guard. He was wearing his heavy cape and had a gun and knife under it. He was too self-confident to give himself away. Understand, if I had suspected a thing, the identity of Don Ricardo would have been known to me. When I saw his hands under the cape, where I knew he kept his weapons, I just supposed he had the usual mistrust of the Californios for any officers. The officers treated, and Vasquez drank with them. Laughing, he said, I guess I had just as well drink with you fellows as anyone. Before they left, he treated them. When the officers left, Vasquez got on his horse and rode away. I served all of the drinks myself. I immediately remembered this incident when I learned who Don Ricardo was. It is not generally known that Tiburcio Vasquez was turned into Sheriff Rowland by relatives of his niece, Felicita Vasquez, whom he had disgraced. 
Those who took part in this were myself, my father and mother, Francisco Vasquez and his wife, and the wife of the old camel driver, Greek George. Greek George's wife was a Lopez, a cousin of mine. I heard all the details of the capture from her several times. When Vasquez was eating his dinner at Greek George's, George and his wife were expecting the officers to arrive at any time, but did not know how they would come. The wife saw the wagon coming and suspected that the officers were in it. Vasquez had a repeating rifle and a double-barreled shotgun, both fully loaded, leaning against the wall close behind his chair. In waiting on the table, George's wife had to walk between the back of Vasquez's chair and the guns, where there was only a few inches of space. She purposely stubbed her toe against the guns and grabbed them as the muzzles were sliding along the wall. She complained that they were in her way and might accidentally be discharged. While complaining, she moved the guns through a door into the next room and as far away from Vasquez as she could. While she was doing this, she could hear the officers getting out of the wagon. Vasquez knew nothing of what was coming until some of the officers ran to the door. He never reached his guns. The officers shot him in the rear as he was climbing out of a window. Many people believe that Greek George and his wife tried to help Vasquez escape. It is true that Greek George was arrested and his wife held in question. That was done to divert the suspicion of the Vasquez gang. If they had known the truth, they might have killed both Greek George and his wife. You asked me if I could locate the exact spot where Greek George's house stood. The stage of the Hollywood Bowl stands on the exact spot. Tiburcio Vasquez was captured on May 14, 1874. They kept him in the Los Angeles jail for nine days. During this time, he had three interviews with newspapers. He claimed he'd never killed anyone, and he only wanted to return California to Mexican rule. He said the same when his trial was held in San Jose in January of 1875. His trial lasted four days. He was found guilty of one count of murder in the Tres Pinos robbery. He was hung on March 19, 1875. He was 39 years old. He's buried at the Santa Clara Mission Cemetery in Santa Clara, California.